Hi, everyone. <laughs> and again, I'm Sarah Canicchio, Director of Admission. We're going to go through the application process in this presentation and um, stop a little bit early for questions. And then I know that some of you are um, registered for the next session. So we want to give you a little bit of a break before the next session starts so that you don't have to be sitting here. Um, I hope that you uh, were able to join us for some of the sessions this week, um, either on campus on Monday or through the virtual sessions. Um, if you weren't able to, that's fine. We have uh, the recordings that will be available online at the end of um, the week. So they'll be uh, linked to our open house um, webpage and you can watch the recordings there and reach out to us if you have any questions um, that aren't answered by the recordings and maybe we can connect you with um, a, an administrator in the program. And um, as I mentioned before, but nobody heard me because I was muted, um, I have my colleague here, Rosie, uh, joining me, and she'll be sharing some links um, throughout the presentation as well. And I ask that um, you put in your questions in the chat, and we'll go over them at the end of the session. Um, and thank you for joining. Hey, as you know, um, GSAP offers eight, uh, eight degree master's programs. And in this session, we're just gonna go through the application process to give you time for to ask questions and, um, and you'll have the financial planning session um, right after this that will be recorded as well. Hey, uh, the application is open for um, the 2025 um, entry for either summer or fall, whichever program that you're interested in. Um, and we encourage you to um, start your application, um, get acquainted with the different sections of the application. Um, and many of your questions may be answered directly in the application. So if you haven't done it already, I would recommend um, logging on, starting an account just so that you can peruse the different sections of the application. And um, a few things to mention before you start your application. Um, sometimes you're very used to using a nickname. Um, so we want to remind you that you should use your legal name um, on your application. It should match the uh, the documents on your um, on your identification, um, including your transcripts. We'll be uh, matching up your transcripts with your application and your test scores if applicable. So it's really important that your name matches um, so it doesn't um, delay the completion of your application. So please um, make sure that your names match um, on your application. And um, you can only submit one application. Um, per cycle. So um, if you are interested in an approved dual degree program, that is the only time that you can submit two applications. Um, and if you are interested in that, um, you need to do that concurrently. Um, all of the applications will be reviewed during the application uh, review period, which is um, from January through March. And um, Rosie will share a link to the dual degree approved programs. So if you're not applying for an approved dual degree, then you can only submit one application. For example, if you're applying to the MARC program, you can't submit another application for um, for the advanced architectural design program. Those are not approved dual degree programs. Um, and 
Lastly, I just wanted to mention, I know that a lot of people tend to want to wait to submit their application at the very end, right when the deadline hits, but you can submit your application um, when you're ready with those documents, which includes the portfolio and your transcripts, but the recommendations don't need to be submitted before you submit your application. So um, in the recommendation section, you'll have a chance to include your recommender's names, and that's all you need to do for the recommendation section. Um, if you have all of the other materials, then you can hit submit. You don't need to wait for your recommenders to submit their application. You can submit your application well before they do. And another thing to note when you submit your application, you can actually log into your application portal just to see um, if your recommenders have submitted their application. So it gives you that um, additional um, uh, access to view your dashboard. And our application deadlines are January 3rd for the Master of Architecture program and January 15th for all of the other programs. So it's really important that you have all of your materials received by the deadline. Um, for example, if you are taking a TOEFL test or um, you want to submit your GRE scores, those need to be received by us by those deadlines as well. Um, they shouldn't be coming after because right after the deadlines, we'll be compiling all of the information that you've sent to prepare them for review. And as I mentioned, the review cycle is very short. So we need to have all of those materials in time to send them off for, um, for review to the faculty and, and the program. Um, and the other thing to note is if you're, if you're applying for a dual degree program, um, you don't have to adhere to uh, uh, one deadline. So for example, if you if your dual degree interest is Master of Architecture and um, the CCCP program, then um, you can submit your CCCP application by January 15th and your Master of Architecture application by January 3rd. You don't need to submit them both by January 3rd. So each one has, um, has their separate deadlines. And regardless of whether you're interested in the dual degree, they will still be reviewed by separate faculty. Hey. And these are all um, can be referenced on the um, on our GSAP website for the application process. And Rosie can share the link now. And um, one of the main things that you have control over is your personal statement. And um, for the most part, all of the programs have similar um, prompts for the personal statement with the exception of the urban planning program and the computational design practices program. So um, generally for the other programs, um, the word limit is 500 words um, with the exception of the urban planning program, which is 800 words. So um, in this section, it's, it must be concise. We're not looking for, you know, um, your biography. So you, you wanna be very strategic on what you put in here. Just follow the prompt, which is basically, um, you know, an opportunity to present yourself um, and letting us know why you're interested in pursuing your, your degree, um, giving a little bit of information about your background, and it's important that um, you write one specifically for GSEP. I know that many of you are applying to many different master's programs, but um, if you're writing one statement um, for all programs, um, it's it can be too general and um, it shows and it's not uh, as helpful to the readers. 
So um, we recommend that you start a different a statement for each school that you're applying to, just so that um, it can um, uh, be the best um, statement that you can uh, write for a graduate program. Um, and for the urban planning program, um, uh, there is an additional writing sample that you could submit that they ask for, but it, it's it's optional. And um, for that, you would upload that in the um, supplemental materials section. So the maximum word count for that would be 1500 words. And um, uh, it's, again, it's not required, but it is encouraged if you um, are able to provide a writing sample for urban planning, um, or if you have any visualization and um, experience with GIS or analysis, you can um, submit with your urban planning application. And for students that are applying to the computational design practices, uh, uh, design practices program. Um, if you know a little bit about the research that you want to do within um, computational design practices, then um, you should include that with your statement. And um, the prompt is directly in the application. So there's no need to um, uh, really remember what I'm saying because all of that can be referenced um, directly on the application. And the resume and um, CV is a requirement um, and there isn't any uh, preference to which one that you um, need to submit. Some students are just more comfortable with CVs and other students have um, written resumes um, throughout their academic career. Uh, there is one isn't better than the other. This is a good place um, to include, um, you know, work experience that you couldn't highlight in your statement. So uh, also be strategic about that. We don't need everything from when you were in high school. So just uh, a lot of the relevant information that you think might strengthen your application. And transcripts of all your prior studies um, should be included in your application. And this doesn't include online courses that you didn't receive credit for. So for those that you wanna show us that aren't in this category, again, there's a supplementary material section in the application that you can upload um, that type of material. But for this, it's really just your undergraduate studies and your uh, master's studies if you have um, completed one or are currently pursuing a master's program. Um, this is where that you, you would input it. And um, one thing to note is these should be copies of your official transcripts. We um, do not accept uh, screenshots in this upload or um, downloading from a student account or a degree audit. These should actually be copies of your official transcripts. And um, please note, they need to include your name and the school name on these copies of the official transcripts. Um, because if admitted and, and you decide to enroll, um, there will be a verification process for these transcripts and um, they need to match. So it's really important that you make sure that the copy of the official transcript that you have includes your name and um, the school name. Um, and one last thing for transcripts, we do not require high school transcripts. So don't enter that information um, and don't upload your high school transcripts. Okay, and um, there are three letters of recommendation that are required. Um, 
And a few things to note about the recommendation. We, we recommend that you reach out to your recommender, maybe have a conversation, or even when you're requesting this recommendation, give them um, a, you know some explanation of the program that you are applying to, maybe some of the things that you have been doing recently, um, because uh, if your recommender um, hasn't seen you in a while, you want to um, remind them of the, you know, the past experiences that you've had with them just to joggle the memory. Um, two, it's not important that um, you ask somebody who you don't have a strong relationship with. Um, a, a high title is not going to help you if they if they don't know your ability to succeed in a um, rigorous academic environment. So it is recommended that um, you choose strategically, again, um, your recommender. It should be a faculty member. Um, however, I know that many students have been out of school for a while. And if, if that's not an option, for you, then you could submit um, one letter of recommendation from um, an employer. But it, it is really important to have that conversation with them, to let them know what you're applying to um, and what your focus is, just so that they can write a really detailed um, recommendation, a really strong recommendation as to how you can contribute and what you've done um, the, their experience with you. Um, and the other thing about recommendations is, again, I would recommend that you um, start your application now so that you can input your recommenders' names in the application. Because what happens is you enter their name in the application and they automatically get sent um, a request. So after you've had this conversation with your recommender about um, the schools that you're applying to, um, they get this notice to with, with a link to upload their recommendation. And it's important that they get this now because um, uh, so that they have time to think about your recommendation and um, and you can actually send them reminders directly through your application portal if they haven't submitted it. And um, the deadline kind of falls around in um, a very busy period for everyone, uh, January 3rd and January 15th. So um, it's important to think about how busy people are in that um, in that time frame, and that's one of the reasons that a lot of applications are delayed because of the holidays. Um, so we really recommend that you, um, if you know who your recommenders are, add them now to your um, application so that they can get this uh, automatic email with the link to upload. And so if they're able to do it now, that then that um, is out of the way and you don't have to um, be um, uh, anxious about their recommendations coming in around the holidays. Okay, your portfolio. So um, most of the programs um, require a portfolio except for historic preservation, um, real estate development and urban planning. Um, however, there is a portfolio section for all of the applications. So if you feel inclined to, you can submit a portfolio in addition, um, regardless of whether it um, is required for your program. So you do have the option for that. And um, really, we want you to kind of share your vision of um, really how um, how you want to present yourself as a designer. So there isn't a 
a prompt for this. We we want you to think about how you want to present yourself. So we don't. Um, there are students that are coming from many disciplines, and um, one of the strengths with GSAP is students coming from many disciplines. So we want you to bring that uh, when you're thinking about um, curating your portfolio for submission. And um, really, we we want to get a some sense of your your spatial understanding. So, uh, and you can do this with um, any multimedia. So that is um, uh, addressed directly in the application as well as the um, application instructions. So you can use photography, drawing, and students coming from architecture backgrounds will include um, you know, your architecture work, and it's fine to include professional work. And be sure to um, note in your portfolio if it's shared work from a group project, um, make it very clear how you were um, involved in it. So um, yeah, the portfolio is flexible and open. Um, and we hope that you would bring your um, individuality in it um, so that it could really um, allow faculty to um, understand um, uh, what your vision would be uh, depending on um, any background that you're coming in with. So that would be really helpful. And um, the GRE and GMAT scores, they are optional. However, they are encouraged for students that are applying to the master's in real estate um, development and urban planning. So um, it, again, if you have uh, not taken these and um, you will not take them, this will not hold your application. So your application will be completed regardless. However, it's really important to note that if you have taken them and you want to self-report um, on the application, you will need to have the official score sent directly for verification. So um, if you don't plan on sending the official scores, um, please don't self-report in this section. And the English proficiency exam is only required for students whose primary language is not English. And there are exemptions. And if you have studied um, in at least the undergraduate level for at least two years um, in a school where the language of instruction is fully English, then you can be exempt from it and you can self-report this directly on the application. No need to email us about it. You can do that self-reporting directly on the application. Um, and we accept TOEFL, IELTS, and Duolingo. Um, and again, with this, uh, if you intend to self-report, even if this is not a requirement for you, um, then we will need you to send the official transcripts directly. Um, so if if you've been exempt from this and you don't want to send you the official um, scores, then don't self-report in this area as well. Oops. Okay, and for the most part, everything will be submitted directly on the application. Um, you will upload it directly on the application, except for the letters of recommendation, which will be uploaded by your recommender. And if you um, require the GRE or the English proficiency exams, then those need to come directly from the um, 
the testing center. And um, please note, everything should be received by our office by the deadline. So um, uh, if you're thinking about taking these exams, then think about when those test scores will be available. Okay, hey, tuition and aid. And um, our colleagues from student financial planning will talk about the different types of financial aid in terms of federal aid and aid that is available for uh, international students in terms of student loans. But for GSAP support, um, I wanted to mention that there is no um, additional application process for um, being considered for a scholarship at the time of admission. So just submitting your application, um, you will automatically be considered for um, a GSAT merit-based scholarship. And this is open to domestic students and students from inter international status. So there isn't an, an additional application for international students. All you need to do is submit your application. And um, these merit-based scholarships are also being um, reviewed and considered um, at the recommendation of the faculty. And these merit-based scholarships, um, if you're awarded um, at the time of admission, it will be included on your admission letter. Um, and these follow you throughout your academic studies as a GSAP student. Um, granted, you adhere to the, um, the academic um, policies um, and, um, and are attending full-time. Um, the other thing about the merit-based scholarships awards are they're, they're very competitive um, and they're not guaranteed for all admitted students. Unfortunately, we're not able to support all um, incoming students. Um, so uh, it's important that um, you also do some research outside of um, outside of GSEP, there are many scholarship um, external sites where you can find um, scholarship deadlines that are happening concurrently. So you don't want to miss out on those. And our colleagues from student financial planning will go over those as well. Um, and the other additional support that we're um, able to share is um, after upon enrollment, um, enrolled students will be able to apply for a need-based scholarship um, and also a merit-based scholarship, usually around the summer. And, um, and the maximum award for these scholarships are $10,000. Um, the admission support um, that I forgot to mention is the maximum um, the, the range is from 6,000 a semester to full tuition. And um, that's, that's for the um, admissions merit-based scholarships. But for the continuing support, the need-based and the merit-based scholarships, the maximum is $10,000. And all enrolled, enrolled students um, will be um, able to apply for those. And um, we generally are able to share the notification of these scholarships um, by, uh, by mid-September. And additionally, enrolled students can apply for assistantships um, in casual employment or federal work study if that is um, something that you're eligible for. The assistantships at, uh, at GSAP are salaried positions and um, they don't come with a tuition um, award. So these are purely salaried positions um, that you will be paid uh, bi-weekly. And Rosie can share um, a link to the um, assistantship page, just so that you can get a sense of um, the salary students are getting 
for the semester. And additionally, um, students at GSAP um, will do uh, some kinney travel or uh, travel for their advanced studio courses. Um, usually that happens at the last semester or um, uh, one of the, the last years that you are attending. And um, the travel support is really to um, offset your travel. So it's not meant to um, pay for the whole trip, but it, 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 it does pay for um, the flight and um, some other incidentals. Um, and this year we have students going all over um, the US, um, to Ghana, to um, Italy, and it really varies depending on the advanced studio that uh, you are currently enrolled in. And here are some financial planning resources, um, and uh, Rosie will add a link to them, and also our colleagues from Student Financial Planning will go over them as well. Um, and they're talk they'll talk about the the different um, different search engines, um, and also share some links that will be similar, but I, I would recommend you um, uh, just making an account for some of these so that you can kind of see what um, what they're able to do in terms of filters for um, scholarships that pertain to you. So these are really helpful um, resources. You just need to create an account for them. And hey, um, right now we can open up for questions and uh, Rosie will um, read out some of your questions and then we can start there. And here, here is our contact information, arch underscore admissions at columbia.edu. Um, feel free to email us at any time. And thank you for joining. Uh, Rosie, uh, do you want to read some questions off? Yeah, so the first one is going to be, um, can they submit an application before they send the GRE? Sorry, can you submit? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. I think so. Okay. Um, yes, you can submit your application before any of the test scores, before the recommendations. Um, uh, once you submit your application, you'll actually be able to log into your application portal to be able to see what's missing from your application. And another question we have is, we have to submit the application before a certain time to be considered for the merit-based scholarship. And are they considered even if they submit the application last minute? No, the, they're all reviewed at the same time. So submitting earlier uh, doesn't matter, uh, just as long as they're all submitted by the application deadline. Now we have a question about the English proficiency test. Do we have a minimum score for the test and do we accept the IELTS one skill we take? Um, I'm not familiar with that IELTS score uh, test, but um, you should adhere to the IELTS academic test. That's the one that we, um, uh, we accept. And wh what was the other question? I'm sorry. Um, is there a minimum score for the English proficiency test that people have to meet? There isn't a minimum published score. Um, we will reach out to um, students if we have any questions about your proficiency. But if you want to have a benchmark of uh, a minimum score, generally the university recommends having at least 100 total. And I believe that might be um, approximately a seven IELTS, but um, 
not having it doesn't mean that you would not get admitted. We would just reach out to you to confirm your um, proficiency. And another question about portfolios. Is there a standard dimension size for the portfolio? It's just gone. Um, is it 20 pages for 20 full spreads or is half the spread counted as one page? There's a separate question after that as well that I'll get to. So um, just think of it as one PDF page. So if it's in one PDF page, that counts as a page. So if your spread fits into one PDF page, then that's just one page. And um, yes, the, the maximum is 20. Um, the programs are reviewing many applications. So we really um, ask that you adhere to the, the guidelines of the application. Um, and the second question was, if merit-based scholarships are less common with the one-year degree, no, that's not true. Um, all um, all degree programs um, are considered for scholarship. And another scholarship question: What is the number of merit based awarded at the time of admission, and what is the procedure to apply for assistantships? Um, the merit based awards are based on the program's recommendation, um, and the assistantships. Uh, if admitted and you decide to enroll, the assistantship office will send uh, notification to enrolled students when the application is available. So typically um, for summer students, an application will be available um, for the, so, sorry, for fall starts, the application will be available in July and a decision will be made in at the end of August and then for the spring semester the application generally goes live in November and a decision will be made uh, late uh, December uh, and all of that will come directly from the assistantship office. And someone has asked is there any possibility of getting an application fee waiver? Yes, um, if you actually um, start your application, you can go to the application fee section and you can review the different um, selections for the application fee and you can um, uh, request it directly there. It usually, it, it at the beginning, it, it may take um, a week or so to review your um requests, but please note the review happens once you hit submit. Um, so if you are interested in an application fee waiver, I would recommend um, getting your application together quickly um, and then submitting it well before the deadline so that your application fee waiver can be reviewed. Um, at that time, the review takes about um, 24 hours to a week. So it's fairly quick turnaround. And Sophia has asked what the awarded range is for the need-based grants. The need-based scholarships for continuing students is $10,000. And um, Previously, it there was a range between twenty five hundred um, to ten thousand, but in the previous couple of years, it's just been a ten thousand dollar award for need base. And we have a really good question here for a student who has finished an undergraduate program four years ago. Is it okay if that portfolio has made the majority of professional work in? It's really up to you. So however you want to curate your portfolio, there isn't a right or wrong way to do this. So um, it's it's really based on, um, you know, how you feel the images um, go well together and how they present you as a designer. Um, so, yeah, it's it's. It's up to you. And I, the other thing I wanted to mention about the need-based continuing scholarship 
is that um, all scholars, all GSOP scholarships are competitive and not guaranteed. So um, that includes the need-based scholarship. Someone has asked, uh, can they include a personal website on the application? Um, in addition to the portfolio submission, yes. Um, however, all students, all applicants that require a portfolio must submit the 20 page PDF upload. And if you wanted to include a link to your uh, website, you can do that in addition. Um, on the application, you will see two sections and you can just add your URL there. But it's really important that you can't just um, include a web link, otherwise your application will be rendered incomplete. The main thing is you need to upload your 20-page um, PDF for your portfolio because all of the um, reviewers are expecting to see this PDF first. Um, so it's important that you um, do the basics before the additional um, link that you want to include. And we have another question about a different scholarship. For the Columbia University Scholarship for Displaced Students, is it through a separate application or a recommendation from the admissions committee um, yes, that, that is a separate application. And please note that you definitely need to apply for both um, concurrently. So uh, that is a separate application. Um, are there any information sessions available for dual degree programs? Or is that a contact that people can reach out to? There are several contacts for you to reach out to, depending on which dual you're interested in. And if you just email us at arch underscore admissions, we'll be able to um, connect you with both contacts. And I have another question about dual degrees here. If someone applies for a dual degree, um, will that application be evaluated separately for each program or are they evaluated jointly together? And is it possible to be accepted into one de dual degree program? Um, so if they were, um, so they mentioned specifically here the MARC and the um, urban design programs. So if they're accepted to one and not accepted to the other, how well would that work? Yes, that's absolutely correct. So you can apply for dual degree, you have to submit two separate applications and the, the applications will be reviewed separately by those programs. And there is a chance that you might be admitted to one and not the other. And, um, and in that case, then you have the option in enrolling in that one as a single degree. And also, if you um, there, if you apply for the dual degree program and you decide that you only want to pursue one, um, then you you're not um, required to pursue both if you change your mind. So, um, so that is correct. You. Um, there is a chance that you can be admitted to one and not the other. And how should people be presenting their portfolio? Should they be focusing on just defining explaining each project in detail? Should they be prioritizing one aspect over the other? And what would you recommend for portfolio submission? So um, if you wanted to include a little explanation within your um, within your images, that's fine. Um, it should be just kind of a little blurb on the corner. Um, and this is pretty common for portfolio submissions. But really, again, um, it's up to you how you want to present your work and how you want to explain your work. Um, and I would recommend um, after putting together your portfolio, um, have it reviewed by your current faculty, your peers, um, 
get a few different um different eyes on it um and and yeah it's it's really flexible so again we don't want to put any um any ideas um, out there, we want you to come up with something that is unique to you. Um, so I believe Kira is asking in what month will the admission decisions be announced and when will the unconditional LOA be reduced, be released, sorry. Um, can you repeat that last question? Yeah, when will the unconditional LOA be, be, be released? I'm not sure what LOA is um, referring to, but you will see on the application portal um, that all decisions um, will be completed and students will be notified um, generally around mid-March. And if we can share the news earlier, then we definitely will notify students earlier. Um, the other thing is actually I'm not sure that leave of apps the LOA typically um, is an acronym for leave of absence so I'm not sure if that's what you're referring to so if you want to chat and um, add some additional clarity oh, letter of acceptance so releasing the letter of acceptance oh yeah so it's mid-March. <laughs> um, and I have someone asking if part-time students can qualify for assistantships as well. That's a good question. They're primarily um, open to um, full-time students. And I will double check on that because typically if you're going part-time, it means that you're um, currently working full-time. So um, from my understanding, um, assistant ships are not available to um, part-time students, but I will double check for you. Um, if you can actually email us at arch underscore admissions at columbia.edu um, so that we can um, send you that confirmation when we connect with assistant ships. Yep. I've also put the email in the chat as well, so people can copy and paste. Okay. Let's find the next question. What criteria are merit-based scholarships awarded on? For example, is there a heavy weight to the portfolio, CV, ETC? Yeah, so every piece that you are submitting is um, weighted. Um, it's a very comprehensive review. It's It's... I would say it's different than the undergraduate review. There isn't a, a score that is weighted more than another. So I would focus on every piece of required material that you're submitting with your application. Um, obviously you can't really do much about your transcript now, but if you're currently um, in your undergraduate program, then, um, you know, finish strong. Or if you haven't been in school for a while, I suppose um, it might be too late to take classes right now to have them ready for the, um, the, the deadlines. But yeah, everything that you're submitting along with your application is very important to understand you as a whole um, and understanding how you can um, be successful here. Yeah, and we've just had a comment on that question as well, asking if that clarifies as well for the English test, is that the same answer? Yes. So um, the other thing I mentioned about the English proficiency exam is we don't have a published minimum. But again, we will reach out to you um, if there are any questions about your proficiency. And we have a question here. What is the time when prospective students can apply for assistantships? Is it during the application or is it right after getting selected? Yes, so assistantships, again, are for enrolled students. Um, and once you're enrolled, you'll receive notification from our assistantship office. 
um, and if you started, if you will start in the summer, you'll get a notification of the different assistantships that are available for summer students um, and so on. And Jimmy is asking um, how the portfolio is viewed and then viewed as a one-page spread or a two-page spread. The portfolios are reviewed as a whole. Um, I think if your question is, can you submit a spread or not a spread, it's up to you. So really the images that you're including in your portfolio is based on what you think represents yourself the best, how you um, look at um, the discipline that you're interested in. Um, so the submission can be in many ways. Some, some students include a spread in one BDF page and some students don't. So it, it really is up to you. Within the um, parameters of 20 pages, whatever, however you feel best represents your vision and your past experience, um, it's up to you. And we have a really good question here. What should someone do if their institute is not listed on the institution's list when in the application portal? That's fine. Um, just include the, just type in the, um, the college name and we'll, um, check that on the internal side. And are the tuition and fees the same as last year, 24 to 25, as the website hasn't been updated with any tuition differences? Yeah, it won't be the same. Uh, typically there's like a 3% increase for tuition. So when, the, when that is available, it will be updated on the website. And our last quick question is, does a title page count in the 20 page spread limit? Yes, a title page does count and um, it's not necessary. <laughs> so we know it's a portfolio for submission. Um, and if anything, if you're trying, if you're trying to differentiate the different portfolios that you're submitting for different schools, just write a little note at the bottom of you know a little footer um, indicating that it's your GSAP portfolio, but um, a title page is not necessary. I think that's all the questions. Oh, here we go. I'm planning to apply the scholarship from my country to fund the study, but the thing is the announcement of my country scholarship is always around July, August. By this case, is it that possible a deferred scheme to be in the year afterwards if I was accepted in mid-March? Um, it really depends. I would go through the application process and um, let us know um, because typically defers are very limited and approved rarely and they're usually based on um, uh, medical emergencies. So um, if, if you're awarded the scholarship, um, just reach out to us um, at arch underscore admissions and we'll talk about your your specific situation um, offline. <laughs> All right, thank you for joining everyone.